organic chemistry. It's the study of compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen. So you'll see these complicated compounds like this. You will have seen the word organic used in supermarkets relating to food. Organic in this sense is talking about things without pesticides and it's actually not the correct use of the chemical term organic because chemical term of organic means compounds or molecules containing carbon and hydrogen. So this is incorrect. So why do we have this whole study about carbon? Because it's the most abundant element on the earth and it's also the most versatile. Carbon can make rings like benzene rings. It can also make these really long chain molecules called hydrocarbons. It can make these shapes called buckyballs and it can even make these nano cages which are these tiny, tiny little cages which are being used at the moment um, research into getting these cages which can target uh, cancer tumours specifically and they can be filled with drugs. Gold nano cages can be impulsed with light so they can actually be target tumours specifically. So this is quite an exciting area of organic chemistry. Hydrocarbons. They contain only hydrogen and carbon. You can have saturated hydrocarbons which only have single bonds such as this molecule here or you can have unsaturated hydrocarbons which have double or triple bonds and the reason these are called unsaturated is that these double bonds can open up and another hydrogen could join onto these double bonds so they're said to be unsaturated because carbon could still potentially bond to another atom. Alkanes, alkenes and alkynes are your three major types of hydrocarbon. I'm going to talk firstly about alkanes. Now alkanes have the general formula CnH2n plus 2. What does that mean? That means that if we know the number of carbon atoms, we can work out and calculate the number of hydrogen atoms. And for alkanes, they will always fit this formula here. So let's have a look at if we've got one carbon atom. One carbon, so we put that into the 2n plus 2 formula. So we have 2 times 1 because n equals 1 plus 2 so we get 4 hydrogens. So here we have the formula CH4 which is methane. If we've got 2 carbons the formula becomes H2 times 2 because there's 2 carbons plus 2. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6 so it's C2H6. 3 carbons we do the same, it's 2N plus 2, so 2 times 3 plus 2 equals 8, 4 carbons, 2N plus 2 equals 10, so we get C4H10, and 5 carbons, 2N plus 2 equals 12, so it's C5H12. So that formula will always indicate that it's an alkane. So what is an alkane? An alkane only contains single bonds, so it's a saturated molecule. And if we have a look at single bonds here, it's important to remember that these single bonds can twist around. So when we're drawing structures, it doesn't matter around single bonds in which order we draw the atoms because they can twist around quite easily and move around. But each carbon atom must form four bonds. So if we take this carbon atom here, it's bonded to one, two, three, four. If we take this one, it's bonded to one, two, three, four. So each carbon atom must always form four bonds. When we name alkanes, we need these prefixes, and this works for naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So it's based on the number of carbon atoms. So if there's one carbon, the prefix is meth. If there's two, it's F. If it's three, it's prop. Four, but. Five, pent. Six, hex. Seven, hept. Eight, oct. Nine, non. And ten, dec. We always put the prefix first and then the ane at the end. So an example is C2H6. So we find how many carbon atoms there are. There's two. So the prefix becomes F. And we add ane on the end. So it's ethane. Another example, C8, so there's eight carbons, so it's oct, and ane on the end. So it's that simple. 
So have a go at this question here. This is question six in your notes. Firstly, you need to draw and name these molecules. And then you just need to draw these molecules here. Give it a pause, have a go, and I'm going to run through the answers with you. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many carbons there are. So we can see in this first example there's one carbon and it's got four hydrogens off it. And remember they form this tetrahedral type shape. So if we look at the formula we'll see that it fits the general formula for alkanes so we know that the suffix has to be ain and if we look at the number of carbons there's one carbon here so it has to be methane. If we have a look at this second molecule down here we will draw it two carbons with six hydrogens always double checking that each carbon has four bonds which it does and each hydrogen will have one bond again it fits the formula for alkanes there's two carbons so it must be ethane we do the same thing on with the six carbons here. We can see that this is hex and it fits the formula, so it must be hexane. And we draw those six carbons with hydrogens coming off. And you'll find that the end carbon will always have three hydrogens. And the middle carbons here will need two hydrogens each. This will give each carbon four bonds and it will add up to 14 hydrogens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The last one here, it has 9 carbons, so it'll be non, and we draw those 9 carbons. 9, again, with 3 hydrogens on each end, and 2 hydrogens on each of the other carbons. And just to double check at the end, you add up your hydrogens, make sure that they add up to 20, and double check that each carbon has got four bonds associated with it. So to draw propane, the first thing we need to know is how many carbons it has. So we have a look at our table here, and prop has three carbons. So we draw our three carbons, and it will have the formula for alkanes, which is... CnH2n plus 2, so that's our way of double checking. So it's got C3, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is H, H, H. And butane has got 4 carbons. Again, the formula, it'll be C4H2n, so 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, so that's H10, because it's an alkane. So with hexane, we look at the number of carbons again, we see that there's six, so we draw those six carbons, and then we write our formula, which is C, the six carbons, so hydrogen, there must be six times two, which is 12, plus two, which is 14 carbons. And finally, pentane, which has five carbons, So it must have H12 hydrogens, and we can draw that again. Alkenes are our second group of hydrocarbons, and these have double bonds. Alkenes have the general formula of CnH2n, and as I said, they have double bonds, which means that they're unsaturated. And of course, this unsaturated double bond here is able to open up and accept more atoms, and that's why it's called unsaturated. Again, each carbon must form four bonds. So you'll see here on this double bond, this carbon still forms one, two, three, four bonds. So with this general formula, CnH2n, again we do what we did before, but it's important to remember, because it's forming, it has to form a double bond, alkenes and alkynes do not exist with just one carbon, because they'll have no double bond to form with another carbon. When there's two, we pop that in the formula, two times two equals four, so it's C2H4 and so on. So three will be six hydrogens, Four carbons will be eight hydrogens, and five carbons will be ten hydrogens. 
We name, we use the same prefixes as we used before. So it's the prefix, but this time we put en on the end. So when we've got C3H6, we have prop, en, C6H12, six carbons, we have hex and en. Alkynes have a triple bond. They have the general formula CnH2n. As I said, they contain a triple bond, which is this bond here, so they again are our unsaturated hydrocarbons. Each carbon again must form four bonds, so it's always the way of checking. So here's our formula CnH2n minus 2 this time. And again, because it's got a triple bond with another carbon, it cannot exist with just one carbon. It can with two, so it'll be two times two, which is four minus two, so it has two hydrogens. Three carbons will have four hydrogens, four carbons will have six hydrogens, and five carbons will have eight hydrogens, and so on. When we name them, we name them the same way. It's the prefix, depending on the number of carbons, with Y-N-E on the end for alkyne. So when there's four carbons, it'll be butyne. Seven carbons, it will be heptyne. So when you name the following hydrocarbons, this is the way you do it. So C4H8, the first thing we need to look at is the number of carbons, and we will get the prefixes for them all. So here there's four, so it'll be but. Here there's seven, it'll be hept. Here there's two, so it'll be F, and here there's three, so it'll be prop. Now we just need to figure out if they are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So we look at the formula here, and here we can see that this fits into the CnH2n, because this is two times four is eight, so it must be butene. Seven times two is 14, so plus two, so it must be an alkane. So it'll be heptane. C2H4, 2 times 2 is 4. So it must fit the formula CnH2n. So it's ethene. And C3, 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 2 is 4. So it must be propine. Structural isomers have the same molecular formula. For example here, C4H10. But... They have different structural formulas. If you look at the structure of butane here, which is C4H10, and compare that to the structure here of methylpropane, which is also C4H10. So they have the same molecular formula, but different structural formulas. What this means is that they have different shapes, and thus they have different chemical properties. And obviously they have different names. And we're going to look into naming these in the next video. So just a reminder that the molecular formula is just the molecules written out. The structural formula is the valence diagram that you will draw. We can also have something called a semi-structural formula. And this is writing out the order in which they occur. So when we look at this structural formula, we can see it's CH3, CH2, CH2, and CH3. This is just telling you the order in which these atoms are bonded together. Here's another example. This is methylpropane. And your semi-structural formula here is CH3, CH, and then in brackets, we put the group that's hanging off that CH. So anything that you see in brackets is hanging off the preceding carbon. And then there's another CH3. This will make a little bit more sense when we start looking at the next video, which is on naming structures. You should now be able to complete chapter 8 questions 1 to 6 and 17 to 22.